This happened when I was struggling in my work life. My job barely paid enough to fulfill my basic necessities, which is why I turned to this website called Sugar Daddy Meat. I wanted to find someone who would provide me with a little financial help in exchange for spending time with them. But I was strict on the no physical favor policy though. After a few potential candidates, I did find one. He said his name was Gary and that he was 53 years old. He was a multi-millionaire businessman and was looking for a young, attractive girl to spoil. We chatted for a month. He sent me Louis Vuitton bags, expensive Ralph Lauren suits, and even gifted me Louboutin heels. I often sent him pictures of me dressed like a hot siren, and he never failed to compliment me with his expensive gifts. After a few months, he asked me to meet him. I was thinking if you would like to spend the weekend with me on my private island. You have your own private island? <laughs> yes, and it's luxurious like hell. I thought I had known Gary for a while, and he was really sweet to me. He never said anything disrespectful or asked for any wrong favors. Also, it had been a while since I took off from work and went on a holiday, but now that I have Gary to support me financially, I got greedy. I agreed to go on this trip with him. On Friday night, he asked me to meet him at the airport from where we will be flying on his private jet. I showed up wearing this Versace dress that Gary gifted me on my birthday, and I could see a smile on his face. Gary was dressed richer than any guy in my neighborhood. Everything about him screamed money. He took me to a shiny, big-ass jet plane and said, Are you ready for the time of your dreams? I smiled and kissed him on the cheek as a gesture of being grateful to him. He blushed like he never thought a woman could kiss him, which felt a little odd to me. I mean, with all that money, he sure could have anyone he wants, so what's up with this act of surprise? Welcome to Snow Leopard. A man opened the door for us, and we stepped inside the plane. My jaw dropped as I had never been in a private jet before. The entire interior was wrapped with soft, leather high back seats. There was champagne and a thousand types of desserts on display in a cart. For the next three hours, I forgot where I came from. I just wanted this to be my life forever. And boy, was I wrong. Around 11.30, the pilot announced the touchdown. I could see blue ocean water glazing in the moonlight. Let's go. We have arrived at our destination. The island reminded me of the scene from Edward and Bella's honeymoon in the Twilight franchise. It was so damn big, and the villa opened up to a private beach. As we started walking towards the villa, I saw the private jet leave. I worried a little, thinking I came all this way with this man I had only known for months, but then again, I said to myself, what's the worst that could happen? I'm sure he's brought many girls here before. But as I entered the villa, I realized what a huge mistake I made because we weren't the only ones on this island. In the spacious living room near the fireplace sat three men who were probably in their late 70s. One of them squeaked in a creepy voice. I must agree, Gary, you never disappoint us. <laughs> she sure is something. Come on, folks, be nice to my girl. Gary looked at me, but his smile was different this time. He held my hand and said, These are my acquaintances, Luna. Would you mind if they spent the night with us? Um, I don't understand. I thought it was only going to be the two of us. Oh, no, no, no. You, you don't need to feel uncomfortable for a second. They're just going to drink and enjoy your company. These old fellows get lonely, you see. Damn it, Gary! Speak for yourself! Gentlemen, please behave around the lady. I could see the old men turning red in anger as Gary called them out on their age. There was nothing more I could do, so I agreed. We all sat down and started drinking and eating. I was sitting like a doll, put on display. Those old, creepy men were watching me all at once. One of them was even drooling, looking at my legs. Folks, would you like to see us dance? Yeah, yeah, tell her to shake that little peach. We've waited long enough. Yes, and then maybe she would show skin for us? <laughs> I'd love to see that. So Gary brought me here to be a woman of the street? 
I got so mad that I walked straight to one of the drooling old men and slapped him tight. His false teeth flew away and dropped to the ground. Ah! What the hell, Gary? Is this why we all paid you the hefty sum? You said she'll be a delight, not a nightmare. What? Gary, did you take money from them to bring me here? Is this what you were planning the entire time? Everyone calm down. We can all have a good time, okay? Gary came close to me and said, Do as my friends say. They will drown you in money, darling. The amount of money you probably would never see in your lifetime. I was so humiliated and disgusted by him. My anger got the best of me and I slapped Gary too. And shockingly, his false teeth also came out flying on the carpet. 53-year-old Gary was now looking at least 75 up. Oh my God, you're a grandpa. <laughs> Told you she'd find out someday, Gary. This all got ruined because of you. You old piece of crap. Suddenly, all four grandpas started cursing each other. They were screaming at themselves and throwing whatever they could find. Taking the opportunity, I ran out of the villa. I spotted a speedboat tied down to the dock. I immediately jumped on it and started the engine. I will never look for a sugar daddy ever again. But isn't it risky? I mean, it's not the best, but I at least can pay my rent every month now. What did you say the name of the website was? Seeking Arrangements. You need to get on this website, girl. I'm telling you, these old men are paying me tons of money for the nudes I downloaded from Google. Jeez, what a bunch of creeps. Fine, you don't even have to send nudes. You can just send a bunch of feet pics or even have a mushy conversation with them. They're just lonely, stupid losers with tons of wealth to throw away like trash. But does it work every time? I mean, what if they realize you're bluffing them like this? God, Ella, they don't even care. You have no idea how desperate these people are. Damn, really? Yeah, it's that easy. Look, I will send you this link so you can create an account too. But what if they ask to meet or something? Well, just keep them hanging like they're dried nuts. Dude, you're so gross. I know, but you'll thank me when you get your endless shopping money. Okay, okay, I'll think about it. I'm, I'm going to bed now. Night, babe. Hey, I just sent you the $500 you asked for medical needs. Hope you're doing fine now. Such a sweetheart and a douchebag. Did you get it? Yes, love. I don't know what I would have done without you. How about some nudes tomorrow night? Sure. Once I get discharged from the hospital, I'll send it the first thing when I get home. Great. Get well soon. <laughs> what an idiot. Did you get the thousand dollars, dear? I did, babe. So you liked the pictures I sent you? Yes, very much. You have such plump toes. I just want to lick them when we meet. What a jackass. Literally got those pictures from Google. I need to cut down on junk food. Maybe I should ask one of my sugar daddies to buy me a restaurant. <laughs> Gotta give a little, take a little, and let your poor heart break a little. That's the story of, that's the glory of love. You've got to. You didn't tell me. Tell you what? When are we gonna meet? In your dreams, freak. Hello? You there? God, these wrinkly bald heads are such losers. I gave you 10k already, and you said we'll meet this week. Okay, we will meet soon, just not this week. Maybe next week, babe. Just let me eat, will you? Where did you say you live again? In Michigan. I thought you said Los Angeles. Are you lying to me? Damn, I must have said that to Sugar Daddy 4. I need to play smart. What should I say? What should I say? Ooh, yes. No, I said I wish I could live in Los Angeles. Ooh, got saved by an inch. 
I need to remember all my lies, I guess. LOL. What's so funny? Hold on, I'm driving. <gasps> yes! That must be my sugar daddy three! Keep them coming, losers! <laughs> Guess what? What? Girls like you always get their punishments. What the hell? What do you mean? What is he typing for so long? I know you've been lying to me all these days. No one gets away with my money, though. If I'm not wrong, you live on 32nd Avenue, Russell Street, New Jersey, house number 12. Right? <sighs> oh my god. How did... How did, he, how did he know all this? <laughs> did I say it right? Your silence says I did. Hello? Who's this? Your roommate shouldn't have kept her window open. <laughs> You stalking freak! I'm gonna call the cops just waiting! I was around 23 when this incident happened. I was a fairly attractive girl with a hell of a lot of bills to pay. My parents were from a small town, hence they sent me to college with whatever they had. No way I could ask them for money to have fun, so at some point, I decided to find a sugar daddy. This basically sounded like if you were good looking and wanted to be taken care of financially by an older man, all you had to do was give them your time. I went on a website that was meant to arrange two people that could mutually benefit each other. There, I met Alan, who was a man in his late 40s looking for a sugar baby to spoil. Alan claimed to be a doctor and made big promises like he would buy me a brand new car, pay all of my rent, send thousands a month, etc. I believed him. Yes, like a fool. I did. We agreed that he would drive down the three or so hours to come to meet me at a big hotel that was in my city. Alan told me he booked a room for us as he wanted to keep our meeting private. Being a scared college student, I preferred the same too. I reached the hotel in the afternoon and knocked on the room Alan told me he would be staying. Come in. Opening the door, I saw no one. The room was empty, but once I turned to my left, I saw Alan standing right next to me. <laughs> I was standing right here. <laughs> he scared me. So, how are you? He grabbed my hand and took me to the bed. We sat down, and I was feeling extremely awkward. I have never been with a guy twice my age, so I could hardly make eye contact with him. Look what I got for you. Alan gave me this small box. Whoa! Is this... is this a wedding ring? Yes! I want us to be husband and wife, Riley! Dude, what the hell are you saying? I never mentioned anything about marriage! No. No, you're thinking wrong. Alan brushed his hand on my arm and said in a lower voice, I was only asking you to accept it so we can do the things husbands and wives do. I knew the drill, but honestly, being in that moment, I felt really cheap. But again, I needed the money and was also reluctant to provide any physical favors, so I traded carefully. But we never talked about having an intimate relationship, and I'm not really comfortable in going there right away. No, you don't have to right now, but we can cuddle, right? How about I only sleep beside you while hugging you? That much I can ask, right? He suddenly became very pushy, insisting he just really wanted to cuddle me. 
You have no idea how much I miss the touch of a woman. I just wanted to sleep next to you. That's all. You can leave in the morning after a night of cuddling. Trust me, it'll be all fine. Um, maybe some other time? Riley. Riley tried to understand. I kept turning him down, but he was extremely persistent about cuddling with him for an entire night. He began offering me $300 to just stay the night in that resort with him. I drove all this way just for you. Don't send me back empty-handed. Come here. Come to daddy. He started moving the dollars in front of my eyes like I was some puppet ready to dance at his commands. Look, Alan, I just made a big mistake. I'm realizing that now. I can't be the girl you need me to be. I don't want anything from you, okay? I'll, I'll just leave. I finally got up and walked to the door when I heard slapping sounds behind me. Turning back, I saw Alan sitting on the ground folding his legs. His eyes were burning with anger as he stared at me. I don't want your sorry. Are you coming to bed or not? His voice changed as he spoke. There was a threat in his tone. By that time, I already grabbed the doorknob. I was ready to sprint and scream if he tried to do anything. But shockingly, he started screaming and slapping himself. You rejected me? Me? When I said I will give you everything? Cars, houses, jewelry. Still, you're saying no? He was screaming at the top of his lungs and slapping himself constantly. He then got up and ran straight to the wall. He started banging his head on the wall. Once he started bleeding, he looked at me. There was no pain in his face. He grinned like a psycho and said, What if I tell everyone that you're a streetwalker who came to blackmail me and force me to hurt myself after I didn't agree to your terms and conditions? How will your poor parents feel once they know your reality? Riley, once they know their daughter is a witch who milks rich old men so she could buy expensive things, what will happen then? I didn't stay for a second more. I ran away without looking if Alan was following me. I deleted my account and blocked Alan's number. For a week, I kept receiving death threats from unknown numbers. Alan even came to my college. Whenever I saw him waiting for me at the gate, I always took the back entrance. Slowly, he stopped showing up. And I was relieved I got away from a psychopath, but then, a few months later, I saw Alan in the news. He was being arrested for murder. The girl he murdered was a student from my college. The cops revealed Alan asked this girl for illicit favors in exchange for money. He called the girl to his house and eventually killed her. Alan was sent to prison for life. I still wake up having nightmares about him. I see him standing near my bed, down on one knee, holding a diamond ring to my face and saying, Riley, please be my sugar baby. <laughs> the story you just saw is loosely based on this horrifying true crime revolving this ongoing trend of sugar dating. But unlike the animated representation, the real life victim didn't make it alive to narrate her tragic tale. 23-year-old university student Mackenzie Lueck was murdered by her sugar daddy, Ayula A. Ajayi. Ajayi met Lueck in June 2019 through an online website that matched young women with sugar daddies. Ajayi confessed that he plotted to murder Mackenzie Lueck even before he took her to his house in Salt Lake City. The pair met up in a park and Ajayi drove her back to his house where he tied Mackenzie up and then strangled her to death. Ajayi pleaded guilty as part of a deal that removed previous charges of assaults he had been facing. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. 